March is a busy month in the garden. Many of our cool season crops will go in the ground. We should start our pest management, spray our fruit trees one last time before bud break. I have lots of gardening tips, plus planting potatoes and cauliflower. March is a great time to start thinking about pest management, and there are several plants that can be companion plants to help control aphids, and dill is one of them. It grows easy from seed, actually better from seed than it does from a plant, and it can be scattered throughout your garden or interplanted with vegetable plants. And when it blooms, it has a shallow blossom that makes it easy for almost all of the beneficial aphid-eating insects to get their nectar. Cilantro is another great plant or herb to be growing in the garden during the cool season. When it blooms, it also provides nectar and pollen, especially for the parasitic wasps that feeds on the green caterpillars that really like our cabbages. The best time to be planting cilantro in our zone eight is February or March. That way we have enough time to get a harvest before it gets too hot. Because once we reach the 90s, it wants to bolt or go to seed right away. So the sad thing is, is come summertime, we don't have cilantro when we have our tomatoes. But when it does go to seed, it does offer all kinds of beneficial insects, nectar, not only just the parasitic wasps, but butterflies, bees, bumblebees, and these are all great for pollination. Then when you let it develop that seed, it ends up being the coriander, which is a great culinary herb for the kitchen. Cilantro has a lot of good health benefits as well. It's really good for bone health, anti-aging, for the heart and also helps rid heavy metals from the body. So eat up this spring. Every year I like to put up a high tunnel so that I can get a jump start on my cool season crops. This year I was about a month late because of the wind and the rain that we had. But I've got it up and I wanna take full advantage of the time that I've got. The great thing about high tunnels is they're definitely warmer. The soil temperatures are about 15 to 20 degrees warmer than they are outside. Plus the inside stays nice and humid and it is also a lot warmer in there. So the growth of all of the crops that are in here are twice as fast as they are outside. Whether you're growing in a high tunnel or a cold frame or even a low tunnel, especially if you're using plastic, on warm sunny days, the temperature can really rise in these well above 100 degrees. And you want to get some airflow in there because we don't want those high of temperatures for our cool season crops. That'll cause them to prematurely bolt and we won't get a really good harvest out of them. So I'll just watch the temperature in here, open up the doors or the windows or create some sort of a movement airflow in there so that we don't get that hot during those days. Cauliflower can be tricky to get it to head up and in our zone 8 March is the perfect time to get it in the ground. We really want to get cauliflower in before our last frost date and when we start to amend the soil we want to put plenty of organic matter like well rotted manure or compost and work it deeply into the soil so that it's nice and loose to give the cauliflower a good environment to start off in. When buying a cauliflower plant, there's a couple of things that you really wanna look out for. You never wanna buy a wilted or dried out cauliflower plant because cauliflower likes to stay moist from the day it germinated till the day that you harvest. Because if it did dry out, it could have damaged the little bud that will start to develop that head. So we want a nice healthy plant. We also wanna look at its root system and make sure that it's not root bound. Because if it's root bound, it's probably an older plant that's been in that pot way too long. And it also will cause buds to not develop. Once you have your soil amended, then go ahead and add some good organic fertilizer. And I like Biofish 772 because it gives my cauliflower starts plenty of nitrogen to get off on the right foot. Just work it in the first couple of inches of the soil and then you'll be ready to plant. Cauliflower stems are actually kind of brittle and so we wanna plant these deeper than what they are in their pot. The beginning of the pot, you'll see that the stem is very narrow and then it starts to get a little bit bigger up by these topper leaves and that's the depth that we wanna plant it. And when we plant it in the ground, we wanna firm that soil in around it to where it has a nice footing to where it doesn't whirl around and possibly break in the wind. I love to plant sweet alyssum throughout the garden. It attracts a lot of beneficial insects like the honeybees. Parasitic wasps also feed on this, which actually feed on your aphids. So it's really beneficial to plant with your lettuces and your cauliflowers to really combat those problems. It's really great when you put it on the edges of your beds and they can just kind of hang over and they don't even take up any space in your vegetable garden. It smells good and it's pretty. Thyme is another really good plant to have as a companion for other plants in the garden. I really like to plant it with cabbages because it helps suppress those voracious green caterpillar worms. 
it's a perennial, but you can actually grow it as an annual. And the nice thing is, is it blooms and it invites all types of beneficial insects to the garden. Every March, it seems like I get a lot of volunteers that pop up in the garden and never where I want them. I've got a lot of mache that's popping up right in my garlic and I don't want it here because I don't want it to compete for nutrients. So I'll just go ahead and remove these and I'll actually transplant that somewhere else because mache is really good tasting plus it makes a great cover crop for your soil that you can be just turned in later. I've also got lettuces that are popping up here too. And rather than just buying a transplant or sowing some seed, I can easily put these in another spot where I want them because the temperatures aren't too warm and they won't go through too much stress if I do it while they're young. Potatoes are a favorite crop to grow and they're actually pretty easy. In our zone eight here, we'll start to plant them the 1st of March and we can go all the way into the 1st of May for a good crop. Then we can plant again in August for a fall crop. And if you wanna learn more about that, I'll put a link below. Potatoes like a more acidic soil than they do alkali. So I usually amend with some acid mix fertilize when I'm amending the soil. We amend it just like we do everything else. We can loosen the soil and add some compost for a good mix to plant our potatoes in. When we're getting ready to plant our potatoes, we want a seed potato because they're gonna do the best. And when we get a seed potato, we wanna look for little eyes that are on these and we can cut them in half so that we have at least a couple of eyes or one eye in each of these pieces. And then when we cut it, you'll notice here that it's really wet and we don't wanna be planting them when it's wet like this. So we want these to air dry with the side that we cut up. That way they kind of get a healing site on them, a little bit of a scab, and then when we plant them, the wireworms can't get into them as easy and then they won't rot. So when we plant them, we'll plant them with the eyes up and hopefully they've started to sprout a little bit at this point and then we can just nestle them right down into the soil a couple of inches. These seed potatoes here have healed over for about three days and you can see that they're starting to get a little bit of black color on them and that's what we actually want to see because that's like a little scab for them and then we'll just plant them with these eyes up this one has actually several so i could have cut it more and then i'll just push this right down into the ground to where soil is covering it about two inches and i'll actually space mine really close about one foot apart which is probably closer than most people and then i'll let them just continue to grow and once i start getting some sprouting going on about six inches then i'll be mounding up compost over that and then continue to do that. Then once they start to flower, then I start to cut back the water just a little bit and I stop mounding as well. Once your potatoes drop their blossoms or they stop flowering, then it's time to reach in there where you've added all of that compost where you've built it up and that's where you're going to find new potatoes. These are those small potatoes that are just tender and delicious. Then you're going to wait for that potato plant after you've harvested those to actually die back because that's what it's gonna do. That's just natural process. It's gonna die back, you're gonna wait a couple of weeks, and then you're gonna dig down below in the soil where you planted those potatoes and below that, and you're gonna find your main crop, and this is where your big potatoes are at. When it comes to watering potatoes, when you first plant them and throughout their growing season all the way up to blossom, you'll want the soil to stay evenly moist. Never soggy, just evenly moist. Then, once they stop blooming, then you'll cut back on the water. So you might be only watering them maybe once or twice a week, depending on where you live. If you've ever had a problem with potato scab, then make sure that you're rotating your crops. So move it from a different bed each year, at least three years before you return back to its original bed. But another thing that you can do is plant a cover crop prior to planting your potatoes. And mustards are great for doing this because they really help control that potato scab. This is my last week that I'll be able to spray my copper and my dormant oil. I like to spray three times during the dormant season, right around Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Valentine's. This year, we were delayed a couple of weeks because we've had so much rain and we've had some snow, but that's okay because our buds are actually set back two weeks as well. We're just now starting to get some bud break on these where you just start to see the pink or the white pop through on those buds. They're not open yet, so it's totally okay to spray these trees at this point without interfering with the pollination process or harming the bees. So I like to do this one last time and I've got to do it right now because within a couple of days, these guys are going to be open. Our plums and our apricots are the first to bloom. If you want to know more about spraying your fruit trees with horticultural oil and copper, then I'll put a link here so that you can learn more about it. Try planting some pollinator friendly herbs and flowers in your garden this year and see what they can do for you. 
and Luna and I will see you in our next episode. You ready for your part, Bob? You've been so patient. You want this? You want this? Oh, what? What is it?